The first thing that we learn as children are alphabets, right? But have you ever wondered why? Let me tell you. Because these 26 letters form the basis of every word in the English language. And that's why it is so important to know them. Similarly, if we think of chemistry as a language, then we can say that the elements that form the periodic table are a lot like alphabets. Now, so far, scientists from all over the world have discovered 118 elements and they have classified these elements into various groups. This video, we are going to talk about one of the most popular methods of classifying elements that is bifurcating them into metals and non-metals. We already know that when it comes to elements, we need to closely examine the physical and chemical properties of an element to decide whether it's a metal or a non-metal. So on that note, let's understand what properties of a substance help us define it as a metal or a non-metal. Okay, so what is a metal? Metals are lustrous, hard, yet malleable and ductile, sonorous and opaque elements that are good conductors of heat and electricity and have high melting points. So what are the properties of a non-metal that make it a stark opposite of a metal? Non-metals are elements that don't exhibit any characteristic properties of metals. For example, hardness, mechanical adaptability, the ability to conduct electricity, luster or flexibility, but they are good insulators of heat and electricity. As we just saw, metals are always solids, but non-metals can be found in any form, gas, liquid or solid. Sounds vague? Confused? Don't be. I'll explain. From their basic definitions, we can say that metals and non-metals can be easily distinguished on the basis of their physical and chemical properties. Right. So next, I'm going to draw a comparison between their physical and chemical properties. And I'm sure that that will help you understand these two classes better. So let's start with their physical properties. Now, if you look at a metal in its rock form, you can easily distinguish it from other rocks. Why? Because like I said before, metals are lustrous, so it would shimmer. For example, gold, silver, copper, they all have an innate luster. And non-metals are neither lustrous nor shiny. Have you heard the phrase, all that glitters is not gold? So we have a diamond that glitters, but it is a non-metal. Now carbon is a non-metal that can exist in different forms and each form is called an allotrope. Diamond is an allotrope of carbon. Remember, there is always an exception to every rule. Iodine is an exception in the class of non-metals since it has luster. Next. Metals are really hard and found in solid forms. See, you can't break them easily. So please don't try your karate lessons on these super strong substances. Just kidding. But there are a couple of exceptions here too. So there are alkali metals like sodium and potassium which can be simply cut with a knife. Also there is mercury that is found in liquid form at room temperature. And as I told you before, non-metals are found in different forms. For example, oxygen is a non-metal in the gaseous state. Bromine is in the liquid state at room temperature. And non-metals like carbon, sulfur and phosphorus are solids at room temperature. Here's an interesting fact for you. Diamond is the hardest natural substance known. Moving on, metals are malleable. What does that mean? That means metals can be stretched 
or bent into different shapes. And they can even be hammered down to thin sheets. Gold and silver are the best examples of this property as because of the malleability, we have different designs in gold and silver jewelry. Beautiful, isn't it? Metals are also ductile. And what does that mean? That means metals can be drawn into wires, whereas non-metals are non-ductile and brittle solids. Now, if you hit a metal, you get a clanging sound. This property of metals to produce a ringing sound when hit makes them sonorous. And non-metals make no such sounds. Next, metals are opaque. So even if you hammer down a piece of metal to a fine, thin foil, it will never be transparent. Non-metals are not malleable. Let me ask you a question. As a kid, did your parents always warn you to stay away from open electrical wires? And you always wanted to check the shiny thread-like material inside the insulation of the wire? Let me tell you why your parents warned you over and over again about this. The shiny thread-like material is made of metal. As metals are excellent conductors of heat and electricity. Because metals lose electrons easily and free electrons can move throughout the metal conducting heat and electricity. But wait, we have some googlies or exceptions again. Lead and mercury are poor conductors. And although non-metals are bad conductors of heat and electricity, the only non-metal which is an exception to this rule is graphite. How weird is nature? Coming to the last property, metals have extremely high melting points, which means they can withstand heat till very high temperatures before they start melting. As always, a few exceptions here too. Lead, gallium and cesium are the only three metals with low melting points. On the other hand, the only non-metal that has a very high melting point is Diamond, yes, an allotrope of carbon. Phew. So that was all about the physical and chemical properties of metals and non-metals. And we can say that in terms of physical properties, metals seem to have a lot more observable properties than non-metals. But non-metals have plenty to offer too. Okay, so are you ready to dive a little deeper and look into the chemical properties of metals and non-metals? Metals are good reducing agents as they lose electrons and become oxidized. Whereas non-metals are good oxidizing agents as they gain electrons and become reduced. Okay, you look a tad bit confused. Okay, so let me explain it with reactions. I'm sure that will help. So let's start with understanding the chemical properties of metals or their metallic character. Metallic characters are simply the set of chemical properties associated with metals. And we're going to understand how metals react with three different entities. Oxygen, water and acid. Let's start with oxygen, a non-metal element. When metals react with oxygen, we get metal oxides. We already know that metals readily lose electrons and that these are easily gained by oxygen, a non-metal element. But here's an interesting fact. Oxygen doesn't react the same way with all metals. Some reactions are faster than others. Each metal is different with its own characteristics, quite similar to how your personality is different from your best friends or some other student in your class. We're going to illustrate this with a few examples. Sodium and potassium are highly reactive metals. They react with oxygen vigorously at room temperature and can even catch fire. That is why they are immersed in kerosene or oil to keep them stable. 
Apart from sodium and potassium, lithium is another highly reactive metal and hence is stored under kerosene oil to prevent fire. If you take a quick look at the periodic table, you will see that these three elements belong to the same group known as the alkali metals. Now, tutor me for more amazing video lectures. Download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.